My husband, 28, and I, 27 female, have been married for two years. We have an unusual sleeping arrangement. I'm a very light sleeper and I've struggled with insomnia most of my life. It takes me a long time to fall asleep. Sometimes even the slightest noise wakes me up and I have to start again. My husband, on the other hand, becomes some sort of taekwondo prodigy in his sleep with how much he kicks. He's been like this since he was a kid and any attempts to stop it have been a failure. He sleeps like a rock and he doesn't even realize what he's doing. He also talks in his sleep occasionally. I have a job that I need to get up super early for, so my sleep is important to me. When we first moved in together, we slept in the same bed, but that didn't work out. I was left exhausted. He felt super guilty, even when he wasn't consciously doing it. Eventually, we decided to have our sleeping areas in separate rooms. We aren't angry with each other at all. We understand that some people have different sleeping habits. This hasn't affected our intimacy at all. We still lay together in one of the beds to watch movies or something all the time. Sometimes we even fall asleep in the same bed, which I feel fine with as long as I don't have to work in the morning. It's a little unorthodox, but it's what works for us. My older sister, Layla, 32, and her husband are going through a rough patch in their marriage. I think her husband's a colossal idiot. He cheated on her and made some BS excuse that he did it just because she was ignoring him and refused to fulfill his needs. She's so busy because they have three kids he doesn't help her with. I was shocked when she told me she was staying with him even after the affair was exposed. I tried to talk her out of it, but she told me to mind my business, so I did. They're in marriage counselling now. From what Layla has relayed to me, it's not going well. She's been trying to change to fix their relationship. He doesn't even try to become a better husband. He just shoots some halfway idiot apology and justifies his actions. I hate him, but it's her choice as a grown woman to stay. She's, of course, devastated, but also reacting weirdly to the whole thing. She's convinced herself it's all her fault. If she just paid more attention to him, then none of this would have happened. I tried to tell her that isn't true, but she doesn't listen. The other day, she came to our apartment to chat and so I could see my nieces. My husband was at work. She's actually never been to my apartment before. She and her husband have a large, fancy house, so I usually just visit them. With how tense things are now, she said she'd prefer to come to my apartment. One of my nieces opened what she thought was the bathroom door. It was actually the door to my husband's separate bedroom. Layla saw inside that it was lived in, so she asked if we got on a roommate. I said no and just gave her a quick rundown of the situation. She seemed a bit weirded out but didn't say anything until my nieces were all in the living room watching a movie. She began to ask all these weird questions about our intimate life, love for one another, etc. I said we were doing just fine and some of the personal questions she asked were none of her business. She got a bit snappy then and said she was just trying to help me. If I left my husband out of my bedroom and didn't attend to his needs, he may just run off with some other woman. She told me to be careful and that it would be better to just sleep in one bed despite any sleep issues. She even said, you have to keep an eye on him constantly so he won't feel the need to leave you for someone more attentive. I got frustrated. It wasn't even about the bedrooms anymore. She was just projecting her situation onto me. I was also upset she would suggest my husband would cheat on me for not being attentive enough. I snapped and sharply said that her husband was the cheating idiot, not mine. Just because her marriage is failing doesn't mean she gets to critique and coach mine. That made her super angry and she immediately stood up and stormed to the living room to get her daughters and go home. She won't answer my calls. She just sent me one text that said she was just trying to help and not to be surprised when my husband cheats. My husband was also offended, but said he understood she's going through a very tough time now. He suggested I was just a bit too harsh and should have just let her get her paranoia rant out of her system and move on. Her mental state isn't all that good and she's probably just not thinking clearly. My mom agrees with him. She said Layla was being weird and insensitive, but I shouldn't have said something so personal that yelling at her will only push her further away from us and towards her idiot husband. I actually feel bad now. She's not thinking clearly and I should have just moved on. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Well, of course she's projecting. If you and your husband continue functioning as a healthy couple, it destroys her belief that her husband had a valid reason to cheat. She'll wonder how you can have a good relationship while not following the rules while she fails while following them. This would be crushing to her pride and she can't have that, so you clearly aren't in a successful relationship. She just needs you to know it because misery loves company. Husband and mother seem indeed spot on. The sister is supposed to be in therapy and her way of thinking is disturbing. I suspect it isn't a real therapist as the sister and her husband's stances sound like what religious counseling would preach. 
The sister was projecting and convincing herself inappropriately towards OP. OP can't be blamed for snapping at such comments. I disagree. Your husband and mom are wrong. There's no reason you should have just stood there and taken her BS. You don't owe her an apology. Honestly, she owes you an apology for the cruel things she said about you and your husband. She wants you to butt out of her marriage because it's not your business, then turns around and digs into yours like a tick in a dog's ear. Leave her be. Do not be her punching bag. Update. Am I the idiot for telling my sister that she's the one with the failing marriage, not me? Thank you all so much for your advice. Something very intense happened with my sister last night. I was getting anxious and planning to just go to her house to apologize and try to move on. But before I could go, my mom called and asked me to come over. I was shocked to arrive and see my sister sobbing with her suitcase and daughters. She was very distraught and still crying, so we had a bit of a hard time understanding her. Eventually, we figured out what happened. Earlier that day when she was home, her husband said something so repulsive she just left. Before that, she served him a drink and walked away to clean the kitchen and do some laundry. Her oldest daughter walked in and plopped onto the couch beside her father to watch a movie. He laughed and made some idiot joke about how she could enjoy lazing around now because when she gets a husband, all that's going to end. My niece asked why. He pointed to my sister and said, Look at your mom, for example. Great right now, but we almost divorced when she neglected her wifely duties. You should just be like her now all the time and skip the drama. That broke my sister. She packed up and left within the hour. He didn't chase them and just said she'll be home soon. She's still frazzled and doesn't talk much, but I'm happy she's away from her idiot husband. I'm so sorry to hear about your sister's situation. It takes courage to leave a toxic environment and I'm glad she has your support. Now comes the hard part. She needs to sit down and document what he said as closely as she can remember it, as well as any similar statements he's made. She needs to get an attorney. I would recommend a counsellor for the kids who can explore what else their father has said to them or in front of them. When the divorce comes and custody comes up, she will want all the ammo she can get for full physical custody and limited visitation. Support her and help her rebuild herself. Definitely. Did anyone ask this dude if he was doing his husbandly duties, like making sure his wife was happy and well taken care of? This dude is a joke. No woman should ever, ever, ever tolerate a lazy, idiot, misogynist man-baby. Sounds like the sister got a massive wake-up call. She was modeling a crappy future for her own kids up to that point. Best to everyone moving forward. Except for soon-to-be ex-brother-in-law, he can go stew in his ignorance. He is about to find out he needs a job to pay alimony and child support. I just got engaged to my partner of four years and my parents said they would throw us an engagement party. They're paying for everything but want to make it a shared engagement party for me and my sister. I have a slight problem with this because my sister isn't engaged. She's been dating her boyfriend for 12 years and he gave her a promise ring shortly after my engagement. We're all in our late 20s, early 30s, so everyone except my sister and our parents think it's childish and ridiculous. I've had many conversations with my sister over the years that have boiled down to, look, if he wanted to marry you, he would, but she stayed with him and held out hope. And I suppose she took the promise ring as a close enough gesture because she treats it exactly like an engagement ring. My fiancé reached out to her boyfriend because he was equally confused and said, Uh, are you guys engaged? He outright said they weren't. Nonetheless, my sister is showing the ring to everyone and even putting together a wedding planning binder. I feel bad for her, I do, but she's also a grown woman and I don't feel like I should have to enable this farce. I've been dealing with don't forget about sister, make sure sister is included, my whole life, and I was hoping that my engagement, if nothing else, would be my own. I'd rather just not have an engagement party at all than play along with this weirdness. My fiancé would rather have a weird party than no party, and my parents are scolding me for being so selfish to want to exclude my sister. It's a shut-up ring. It's not a promise ring. She's not excluded. It's just not her party. Where does it end? White dress to the wedding. Come along to the honeymoon. Your parents are the kind of parents who will let her do it. Draw your line in the sand here and now. You are not the idiot. I always cringe a little when I hear of anyone older than 17 getting a promise ring. Clearly it was a shut up ring and he has no intention of ever marrying her. Ask your parents what they will say when the guests congratulate them on your sister's engagement and her boyfriend says, we're not engaged. 
Rinse and repeat when the guests say the same to your sister and her boyfriend. Congrats on your engagement. We're not engaged. This party will just lead to the boyfriend dumping your sister because this is an obvious ploy to pressure the boyfriend to propose at the party. Your parents and sister are just embarrassing themselves. Well, my parents' honest to good plan is for me, my fiancé and my sister to be the guests of honour at the engagement party while her boyfriend stays home. This is going to look like your fiancé is marrying both of you, sister-wife style. Please invite me. I need to see who will think this is a good idea. And honestly, did anyone think about what it's going to be like for your sister? People will ask where her fiancé is. They will ask to see the engagement promise ring. Are you sure your parents aren't trying to humiliate her? Please invite me too. I promise not to say a word. I'll sit in the corner and bring my own refreshments. I just want to see the train wreck this will inevitably turn into. But seriously, cancel everything. Make your announcement and say you don't want a joint party or no party at all. Your fiancé doesn't care about the drama or the party. None of this bothers him and he's just advocating for the most entertaining option. Next thing you know, you'll have a joint wedding with her. Don't let this happen. Since I bought a house this summer and had Thanksgiving off work for once, I hosted Thanksgiving for my family. It was my mom, my brothers Bill and Dave, and Dave's wife Yvonne. We were in the middle of dinner when Dave told Yvonne he wanted to divorce. Yvonne was obviously upset. Dave said he was going to wait to tell her, but he couldn't take it anymore. The reason for the divorce depends on who you ask. Yvonne says she thinks Dave must be cheating on her, Dave says it's because he's realized he's gay. I don't think Thanksgiving dinner is an appropriate place to tell your spouse that you want a divorce. Dave thinks I'm being too sensitive because it was my first time hosting a holiday. It made everything awkward even after Yvonne left. He accused me of being a bad sister and phobic. He later apologized for calling me that, but not for calling me a bad sister. I'm seeking opinions from strangers who weren't there and aren't emotionally involved. Was I an idiot for telling Dave that Thanksgiving wasn't an appropriate time to tell Yvonne he wanted a divorce? Am I wrong to be mad at him? Also, I want to add that no one in my family has a problem with Dave being gay. Not the idiot, but Dave sure is. That's awful. Telling someone you want a divorce in front of your family on a holiday is terrible. That was a conversation Dave should have had a one-on-one -on -one with his wife and not in front of an audience. Dave showed his immaturity in this situation. Well, it could be both that he's gay and cheating, but you're right, that is absolutely not the time or place for a personal conversation, especially when she was surrounded by his family. Your brother was grossly inappropriate and very hurtful. I feel so sorry for Yvonne. He's using phobia as an excuse for him being a massive jerk. It's not a phobia. It's plain common sense and decency not to do what he did. That is the most likely situation. Dave is trying to avoid blame for his cheating by focusing on the gender of his new partner. Yvonne is understandably more concerned about the cheating than the affair partner's orientation. My husband and I once saved a lot of money to go to a high-end restaurant in our area. We got dressed to the nines and were so happy for our date night. The guy next to us asked his wife for a divorce. It was the most painful, awkward, uncomfortable dinner of my life, especially after she started ordering more drinks and getting loud but I imagine it would have been even worse at a family dinner. What the heck was your brother thinking, OP? Jesus, the bar is so low, and he still managed to limbo under it. Your brother is an idiot and a childish coward. I'm still recovering emotionally from childbirth, and I'm just not in a good headspace. Everything just feels so damn stupid. So my fiancé and I have been together for seven years. I already had kids before getting with him, and he's always been excellent with them. We'd been in our last apartment for five years when we found out we were expecting a baby, and a couple of months later, he started building us our first home. Due to permits, a lot has been postponed or extended, so there are still about two months before the house is ready. Well, our lease was up two months ago, and we asked if we could do a month to month until our home is ready, but the landlord said no, as they wanted to renovate. So we had to leave, but like, we didn't have anywhere to go outside of an extended stay hotel. So we've been here for two months. I had the baby right before we moved in. Well, my fiancé said he didn't want to bring anything to the hotel that we didn't have to because it would be less to move. So all we had here for three weeks was clothes and the kids' tablets. But then my fiancé started bringing more and more of his stuff here, like his music equipment, keyboard, guitars, recording stuff, gaming PC, Xbox, etc. 
It's taking up so much space, it's a two-bedroom, but he still doesn't want us to have stuff here, so my kids are bored and getting behaviours. I'm touched out. I finally convinced him to grab the kids' Xbox and the VR for storage after asking and pleading multiple times. He wasn't happy about it. But within two days, he was finding any reason possible why the kids couldn't play them, i.e., I'm tired of hearing you guys fight over it and ended up taking the VR and Xbox with him to work one day and stuck it back in storage without telling me. So anyway, I ended up leaving. I told him he was selfish and hypocritical, considering all his fun stuff was here while the kids and I had nothing. He said it was different because he doesn't fight over his crap like the kids do. I'm at my mom's and he's been trying to make me feel guilty. Am I stupid for this? So, moving plenty of his entertainment stuff is no extra hassle to him, but God forbid he does the same for the kids so they can also occupy themselves like he does because the kids' fighting bothers him. This situation is difficult for everyone, not just him, but he's supposed to be an adult and, as such, should understand that kids get restless when bored for a longer period. Also, don't let him guilt trip you with his passive-aggressive comments. You and your children deserve a place where you can have entertainment and peace of mind. Your fiancé's behavior is idiotic. You deserve better. My God, why are you marrying this tool? Girl, there is no way that you're the idiot. Your fiancé is being extremely controlling about your kids. I understand that he's your fiancé, but that doesn't give him the right to stomp over your and your kids' lives like that at all. He's probably been a crap bag at your kids without you having noticed since they're not his. Now that you're in a cramped space, you get to see it head on. Things will get worse once the baby is older.